Starting from the courtyard house, exercise brings wealth and strength. If you can't stand it, you have to pay attention. If you have money, how do you spend it? Just buy it. Mainly urban TV dramas, with a small amount of urban movies interspersed, mainly modern TV dramas such as Sihiyuan, Joyful Song, Under the Gate of Xinyang, Little Women, Thirty Years, Beijing Love Story, Good Sir, Little Huanxi, Little Sheed, My Physical Education Teacher Keywords of the Novel. Film and Television City Starting from Sihiyuan with No Pop-Ups, Film and Television City Starting from Sihiyuan with Full Collection Download, Film and Television City Starting from Sihiyuan with Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1. System and Sihiyuan. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 System and Sihiyuan Blue Star, Flower Planter, Qi Province, Fengcheng, Before the Mid-Autumn Festival. Zhao Xucheng looked at the mooncakes in his hand, stood under the balcony, and looked at the elementary school students downstairs. They were having physical education classes without any worries. One two one, one two one, come here, come here. It's mid-autumn festival again, but unfortunately I have to spend it alone this time, and it's also the first mid-autumn festival night I've lost my job. Zhao Xucheng, who is thirty years old this year, bought a house in Fengqing through his own efforts. Unfortunately, after his 30th birthday, he suffered a significant blow. His wife is suspected of having an affair. The two of them just divorced, and the company laid off employees. He became the first person to leave the company. The voice of the TV came from his ear. Zhao Xucheng looked at it and said, Haha, this man should have more plans for himself, or he might become a dead man. As he spoke, Zhao Xucheng suddenly felt that this scene was a little familiar. It seemed that he had encountered such a scene before, and he also complained about it like this at that time. Just as Zhao Xucheng was pondering why he felt familiar with this scene, a strange voice came to his mind. In system binding, 1%, 10%, 50%, 100%. The happy sport system has been successfully bound, because the host stayed at home for more than a month and roast about the movies and TV plays that destroyed the three views, the system has purposely bound to help the host become a healthy person and a person useful to society. Zhao Xucheng was taken aback for a moment, not expecting to have access to the system. As someone who has been surfing the internet for years, the system is certainly not unfamiliar, but he never expected it to happen to him one day. System, what are you? Happy exercise system. Isn't that right? I'm not an otaku. I'm just temporarily unemployed and haven't been out for two days. Also, what's your point? Host, don't deceive yourself. You're just an otaku. Do you think the system doesn't know that you've been on the front lines of work and home every day since graduation? Do you think that if you have a girlfriend and occasionally go out, and spend the rest of your time staying at home, you can hide it from others? As a human, how can we stay at home all day? We must go for activities. The system did not continue to talk to Zhao Xucheng, but instead presented something similar to a game property panel in its mind. Name Zhao Xucheng Gender Male Optional World Full of Love in a Courtyard Skills Introduction to Cooking Plus Upgradable Skill Point Zero Money 10,000 Yuan Portable Space 1 Cubic Meter When Zhao Xucheng saw the system interface, a black line appeared on his eyebrows. He was not even aware that he only had 10,000 Yuan in cash, and the rest should be in the stock market. Zhao Xucheng watched the movies and TV shows on TV, and then looked at the interface in his mind. He immediately doubted whether he was dreaming, otherwise why was it the TV show he was watching? Although he had not seen the ending yet, he also guessed that he Yuzhu and Qin Huairu were together until the end, and it was amazing to see off the three masters. System, after your time traveling, do you have any tasks? Can you complete the tasks and return to this world? System, system, your grandfathers, come back. You can never wake up a person who pretends to sleep, let alone a system that pretends to sleep. 
Zhao Xucheng looked at the system interface with a bewildered expression, but didn't know how to navigate or what the system tasks were. He could only carefully examine the system in confusion, hoping for unexpected discoveries. As expected, at the very bottom of the properties interface, there is a faint symbol that looks like a page flipping button. This button has the same eye color as the attribute interface, with only a slightly brighter border. If you don't pay attention, you may overlook it directly. Zhao Xucheng had no choice but to focus and look over, and then he saw a change in the attribute interface, which displayed. After the optional world appears, time travel enters the countdown. There is a countdown display behind it, and Zhao Xucheng only has half an hour of preparation time left. Damn it, this doesn't leave me any preparation time. All the things here are modern and useless. Zhao Xucheng watched the footage on TV and thought about what he could bring. After much thought, it seemed like he could only wait for the first time traveling. Zhao Xucheng used this time to reminisce about all aspects of the plot. At first, he thought the plot was very beautiful. Silly Zhu was very enthusiastic about his neighbors and selfless dedication, which moved him. However, as the plot developed, Zhao Xucheng increasingly felt that the plot had collapsed. It's not that the plot is not coherent, but that he Yuzhu is really too infatuated. I hooked up with a widow and helped him without any distinction. When the widow wanted to find a house for her son, they successfully slept together. For the past decade or so, they were hung up and their salaries were all taken away, leaving me with nothing. If it weren't for Lu Xiao giving birth to a son for him, he would probably have been kicked out of the house after the Jia family had all of Yuzhu's belongings. Is it possible for a normal person to simply abandon their wife and children for the sake of so dot called love, family affection, and taking care of the elderly in the yard? Silly Zhu's sister He Rainwater still appeared in the early stage, but disappeared directly afterwards. Why? It's not because she can't stand the situation between Silly Zhu and Qin Huairu, but when faced with her older brother, she is powerless and can only choose not to see or feel annoyed. After Lu Xiaowa appeared with He Xiao, He Rainwater immediately recognized his nephew, but he didn't care about He Yuzhu's future plans. Some netizens also joked that this drama went directly from being full of emotions in a quadrangle to being full of birds in a quadrangle. It has to be said that it is very appropriate. Most people are selfish, only He Yuzhu is a good person. If it weren't for Lu Xiaoyi's return, he might have ended up sucking blood from the entire courtyard alone as a person from the countryside, Zhao Xucheng knows how poor people live, but no one has ever relied on outsiders like this. Of course, when the forest grows big, there are all kinds of birds, let alone people. There must be people like Qin Huairu and Silly Zhu, but Zhao Xucheng would definitely not be such a person. Zhao Xucheng has always believed in the idea of self-sufficiency and has never waited for others to provide financial support. I don't know exactly what this sports system is going to do, but in that society, you just need to eat and drink enough, and completing tasks appropriately is considered complete. Since watching the barrage of comments from netizens, I suddenly feel that there are really no good people in this courtyard, and many things are even more chilling when magnified. An old man named Yi Zhonghai said to Lu Hai and Yen Bugui in the later stage that only pillars in this courtyard could provide him with retirement. Later on, Lu Xiao brought He Xiao back and refused to let He Yuzhu and his son reunite. Besides, what Jia Zhang said about Qin Huairu borrowing stick noodles from Yi Zhonghai in the middle of the night is not normal. In difficult times, if you really want to borrow food, you must go for meals during the day and in the evening. Who would go to borrow things in the middle of the night? The second uncle Lu Haizhong's family is even more peculiar. Lu Haizhong is an official fan, but he lacks the ability to become an official and only knows how to beat and scold his son. Causing parents to be unkind and children to be unfilial, even the only one who has made a name for themselves is not considered by the family, and has never appeared from beginning to end. Although the third master came up with plans and eventually his children left him, he was one of the few people that Zhao Xucheng looked up to. Apart from anything else, 
He knew that he didn't have enough food for the silly pillar and that he had to make up for it even if he picked up his own junk. Su Damao, not to mention, is the worst villain in the yard, but a true villain is much stronger than a hypocrite. Jia Zhang is a representative of hypocrisy, knowing clearly what Qin Huairu and Silly Zhu were colluding for, as long as marriage is not mentioned, there is no problem. If Qin Huairu wants to leave, she will have to live and die, without even thinking about how she got her food and drink, which was not obtained by her daughter. In law betraying her. Qin Huairu gave him three yuan a month, all of which she had to buy medicine to take. She had already recovered from her illness, but now she's just addicted and doesn't care if her grandson will be hungry. But he always says in his mouth, how precious his grandson is. If he were really precious, he would have already bought delicious food with money for his child. The Qin Huairu family was eating and drinking silly pillars, but they lacked gratitude. If it weren't for Lu Xiao's appearance, I'm afraid Xiao Dang and Huai Hua wouldn't be very close to He Yuzhu either. Every time Qin Huairu always says that her family can't cook anymore, she can't cook anymore. But you really can't take the blame anymore. How did you and your mother dot in dot law eat so fat and big ears? It can't be said that it's because of the director, right? The money from the 1960s was still very valuable, 5 yuan was just two people's monthly food. Qin Huairu earns a monthly salary of 27.5 yuan, and the 3 yuan she pays to her mother dot in dot law Jia Zhang can satisfy their food needs with 20 yuan for food. The remaining 4.5 yuan can be used to buy some vegetables. But their family still often goes hungry and goes everywhere to borrow food. Where has their money gone? Zhao Xuqing thought of this and suddenly felt like he had discovered something extraordinary. He could only quickly think about how to face his future life, hoping to find a suitable job while traveling through the past. As time gradually passed, Zhao Xuqing became nervous. After all, it was his first time traveling and he didn't know whether he was wearing it or his soul was wearing it. Slowly, Zhao Xuqing felt a white light appear in front of him, and immediately fell asleep. End of this chapter Chapter 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 When Zhao Xuqing regained his senses, he found himself lying in a cafeteria. Master, do you think this is feasible? Zhao Xuqing heard the sound and looked over. It was Ma Hua, the disciple of Silly Pillar, who seemed to be asking himself. He couldn't help but be stunned for a moment. What's going on? Isn't Ma Hua the disciple of Silly Zhu? Why call oneself a master? Immediately after, a large wave of information flooded into Zhao Xuqing's mind, and he realized that he was now the foolish pillar he Yuzhu. Zhao Xuqing couldn't figure out whether it was soul piercing or body piercing, so he instinctively said, Wait for me, I'll go to the restroom. Walking up to the door, with the help of the glass on the door, Zhao Xuqing finally saw his current appearance, which was the appearance of the silly pillar in the drama. It seemed that his soul had been pierced. After Zhao Xuqing returned, he heard Ma Hua say, Where are you, stewed chicken with mushrooms? Immediately after, I saw Bang Ji holding a bottle and pouring soy sauce into it. Kid, steal the official soy sauce. After seeing it, Bang Gung glared at Zhao Xucheng and immediately stood up and left. Zhao Xucheng didn't want to chase after him or throw something to hit him, but was immersed in the system prompt sound. Ding, host memory has been fused and the system is officially activated. Happy sport system binding, from now on, you will receive a certain amount of monetary rewards for each step. Zhao Xuqing's attribute panel began to appear in his mind, and he saw a significant change in his attributes. Name Zhao Xuqing Optional World None Talent Skill Sports Monetization Level 1, Note For every step taken or run, you can receive a reward of 0.001 yuan. Skills Introduction to Cooking Plus, Upgradable, Skill Point. Zero Wealth. 50 Yuan Experience Value. 0 slash 0.1, Note. For every 10,000 wealth spent, you can gain some experience, 
which can be used for talent and skill upgrades, portable space. One cubic meter the final interpretation rights belong to the happy sports system, rely on it, get rich. Zhao Xucheng's inner excitement couldn't calm down. Although the amount seemed small, only one cent for ten steps, one cent for one hundred steps, and only one yuan for one thousand steps, it should be noted that in this era, the highest wage for workers was only less than one hundred yuan per month, and when calculated, it was less than three yuan per day. The number of steps a normal person takes per day is approximately between one thousand and twenty thousand. He usually walks to work every day, which translates to walking at least 10,000 steps per day and earning 10 yuan per day. You can earn 3,650 yuan per year, and of course, you have already upgraded to level 2. Even if you double it, you can gain more experience points. Don't be too happy too early. The current monetization is not a big deal, and there is still a long way to go. Not to mention, it will take many years to make up for it. Zhao Xucheng stared closely at the system interface, and as he walked around, the money began to change. Without taking a step, it increased by 0.001. He no longer pays attention to this system, as he earns money every day. One day, he will use this system to make a fortune. Surprisingly, the balance turned into 50 yuan, possibly because money from the real world could not be taken away, but Zhao Xucheng was not discouraged. In this era, not to mention households with 10,000 yuan, even households with 1,000 yuan are the envy of people. They can become households with 10,000 yuan in just a few months and enjoy delicious food and spicy food. Su Dumao walked in and happened to collide with Bang Ji. He said angrily, whose bare child doesn't have long eyes when walking. Huh, Su Damao, when you talk about others, you're just like that. If you don't go through the front door, you'll go through the back door, just like Qin's widow's son. Su Damao said angrily, silly pillar, don't be complacent. Do you know who invited your buddies today? Who is it? Factory director. Don't use your hot face to stick to someone else's cold buttocks. If you really treat you like a person, it's not just for the sake of showing an extra little movie, he Yuzhu said. Zhao Xucheng will be referred to as he Yuzhu in the future to avoid confusion. Su Damao said proudly, so what's going on? Can you beg for a glass of wine, buddy? I can do it on the same table as the factory director, and you. You're just a terrible cook. Zhao Xucheng didn't hesitate to pay attention to him and said, get out of here quickly, I don't want to see you. Su Damao didn't dare to provoke He Yuzhu too much, so he stood up and left directly. Zhao Xucheng took a look and was about to go home with his lunchbox. Suddenly, he remembered that today's scene seemed familiar to him. It was just a famous scene, where the meme of the stick was stealing a chicken. He was holding his lunchbox and waiting to take the blame. After thinking for a moment, He Yuzhu said to Ma Hua, Ma Hua, take this chicken back and I'll replace it with something else. Alas, master still cares for me, Ma Hua said happily. Zhao Xucheng looked around and saw that there was still some pork head. He cut a large piece and stuffed it into another lunch box, then walked out of the kitchen. As he walked out of the steel factory gate, he asked about the smell of roasted chicken, and suddenly understood that it was Bang Ji and his sisters eating chicken without disturbing him. He pretended to know nothing and went home. Widow Qin was washing clothes in the yard when she saw He Yuzhu coming back with a lunchbox. Her eyes lit up and she said, Silly Zhu is back. What's in the lunchbox? Qin Jie, I can't do it today. I promised my sister, next time, next time. Qin Huiru felt that He Yuzhu was a bit different today. When he usually came back, he would tease himself for a while, but he remained honest for a few days. Her eyes instantly turned red, somewhat disappointed and pitiful as she looked in the direction of Hiyuzhu, as if wanting to say something. Hiyuzhu didn't see it, so he lit the coal with firewood and started cooking. Braised pork head with potatoes and cabbage, with his inherited craftsmanship from Hiyuzhu, the taste is quite good. It is simmered slowly over low heat, 
ready to wait for Hiyuju to come back and eat. Chin Huairu could only lower her head and continue washing clothes, but her movement slowed down for a moment, as if she was pondering something. After finishing his drink, Su Damao came back and poked his head in front of the chicken cage, but no matter how he looked at it, there was one less chicken. Mozi, Easy Eye, why is our chicken missing one? Lu Xiao Yi opened the door and walked out, glanced at her and said, I don't know. I've had a headache all day and I've been lying in bed. I thought you gave someone a gift. Su Damao frowned and said, Who can I give it to? When I go to the countryside to show a movie, the commune will give it to me. Lu Xiao Yi said in confusion, Then you can't run on your own in the cage, can you? After seeing Qin Huairu finish washing clothes, Zhao Shucheng kept looking at his side without saying anything. I still admire Qin Huairu's unwavering commitment to raising three children, but hanging He Yuzhu is not a big deal. If she really wants to support her children Ni Zhonghai has no offspring, what's wrong with letting Bang Gung become a godfather? In this way, their family will be much more relaxed, and they will have to borrow food from all over the place. But starting from today, Zhao Shuqing said to himself, if it's not necessary, I must reduce my contact with the Qin Huairu family. Otherwise, how can I find a daughter? In law? I won't be able to travel back and take care of someone else's child, living a life of frustration. Qin Huairu certainly didn't know Zhao Shuqing's plan. She thought that something had happened to Hiyuzhu today and hoped to get Hiyuzhu's lunch box tomorrow. Qin Huairu never thought about really supporting her family on her own. She is now just the most basic fitter, receiving the lowest wage. If she can focus on studying technology, then when she improves her level of fitter, the young master will be much more numerous. Yi Zhonghai is an 8th level fitter with a salary of over 90 yuan and almost 100 yuan. As a level 7 fitter, Lu Haizhong earns a monthly salary of 70.80 yuan. Without further ado, if Qin Huairu could improve by one or two levels, their family would not live such a precarious life. If she doesn't want to increase her salary and wants to rely on others to support her family, at least she needs to give people some sweetness. But silly Zhu, only after finding a job did Bang Gung sleep with Qin Huairu. For nearly twenty years, combined with the time he Yuzhu took care of her husband after his death, the whole family has left Silly Zhu stunned for over 20 years. But Qin Huairu got an intrauterine device, IUD, just to avoid having children. So, if she doesn't get close to Silly Zhu, why did she get an IUD? It can't be said it's for Silly Zhu, right? She never thought about marrying Hi Yuzhu from beginning to end. Her concern was that if the two of them had children, Hi Yuzhu would definitely not treat his children as well as idle people. But when he Yuzhu went on blind dates with others, Qin Huairu was also worried about losing her long dot term meal ticket, so she unconsciously went to cause trouble or planned to cause trouble, ultimately keeping he Yuzhu single. Since Lu Xiaoyi left, Qin Huairu has regarded he Yuzhu as her own property, directly receiving her own salary and appearing to be the head of the family in front of the workers, directly cutting off the idea of others introducing him as a partner. Yu Haitang also had thoughts about He Yuzhu, but since Qin Jingru married Su Damao and Qin Huairu stood in front of He Yuzhu, how could someone like her who dared to love and hate give up looking for He Yuzhu? After learning about Qin Huairu's thoughts, He Rainwater realized that his older brother couldn't get rid of Qin Widow, so he ignored it and decided to live his own life in the future. Unless on holidays, he wouldn't go back to the courtyard. He Yuzhu was pondering these things in the room, preparing to avoid these situations in the future, but he had no eyes for his future partner. To be honest, what he liked the most was not Qin Jingru, Ran Xiuya, and Lu Xiao Yi discussed by others, but rather Yu Hai Tang who appeared infrequently and was intercepted by Su Damo. For the sake of her strong willpower, daring to love and hate, not dragging around at all, but really living a life, I still need to train myself well. The next option is Ran Xiuya, an intellectual with outstanding appearance and living together without causing too much disputes. The almost perfect choice is Qin Jingru, who is silly and cute, but unfortunately doesn't have her own opinions. 
If we are really together, we are easily caught by Qin Huairu and won't let her suck blood. The worst choice is also the best choice. In fact, it is Lu Xiao. She said it is the worst choice because her family is bound to have trouble. If she chooses her, the good choice is to go to Xiangjiang with her family, and the worst choice is to stay in the capital. Zhao Xucheng couldn't make up his mind for a moment, so he could only take a step and see which one was the first to win. Anyway, it can't be Qin Huai Ru. After all, if you choose Qin Huai Ru, unless she takes off the ring, it will really be extinct. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Chicken Thief You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Chicken Thief Su Dumao searched the entire yard but couldn't find the lost chicken in their house. He had to have a meeting with a few gentlemen to find the chicken thief. Who is that? It's so unethical. Everyone is here to judge. I finally raised two hens and prepared to lay eggs, but in the afternoon, one of them disappeared. Su Dumao shouted loudly in the yard, Our yard is so big, can this hen still fly? Zhao Xucheng looked outside and was about to go back and continue watching his dishes when he saw Su Demao rushing straight into his own house. Silly Zhu, I'm asking you, did you steal our chicken? Su Demao was so angry that he couldn't find the chicken for a long time that he called out the other people in the courtyard. Seeing that his arch nemesis He Yuzhu didn't appear, he stormed in angrily, ready to see if He Yuzhu had hidden the chicken. Sun Tzu, who are you talking about as a thief? Look, if you find it, I'll call you he. If you can't find it, do you see it? With a fist as big as a sand bowl, you need to taste it. Don't scare me. If you said you didn't steal, then you didn't steal. What are you stewing in the pot? Dare you show me? Su Dumao asked about the aroma of the stew, but couldn't detect if it was chicken for a moment, so he shouted to Zhao Xucheng to open it and take a look. He Yuzhu glanced at him and lifted the lid, revealing that there was pork head stewed with potatoes and cabbage inside. The aroma of opening it made the people in the yard leave behind a clam. He Yuzhu is too lazy to worry about whether Su Dumao can find that chicken or whether he can find the chicken thief. Anyway, he won't be the scapegoat again. In this era, Reputation is still very important. If you have a reputation as a chicken thief, and when you meet a blind date, the family will know with just a little inquiry that the marriage will definitely be ruined. But he didn't expect that he didn't want to be too busy, but trouble still came to his door. Su Dumao retreated, but several gentlemen clamored to convene a general meeting of the entire court. We must catch the chicken thief, so as not to spoil the whole pot of porridge and affect the good atmosphere of the courtyard. He Yuzhu was dragged into the courtyard by the bangs, and could only wait for the development of the situation. Arriving at the courtyard, people of all ages and genders had already arrived, but Jia Zhang and their three children had not yet arrived. Su Dumao sat on a stool in the courtyard, with a bitter expression on his face. When he saw He Yuzhu appear, he snorted and turned his face away. Everyone is here, and the conference officially begins. The official fan's second uncle spoke before the most qualified first uncle, and it took two minutes for the first uncle to preside over the meeting. Yi Zhonghai stood up and said with a serious expression, This matter is very significant. Our hospital has not lost a single needle or thread in over a decade, and suddenly there is no chicken left. This is a very serious matter. Chickens can't fly, they disappear from a good cage, and we haven't seen them in the entire yard. That's a problem. What does this mean? It means there's been a thief in our yard. The words of the old man have been recognized by everyone. Since the liberation, this courtyard has been in good order since we lived together and has never lost anything. Of course, it may also be related to everyone being poor. Everyone knows who has something in their family. Suddenly, a chicken was lost, and everyone felt that they should find the person to prevent theft from their own homes. Su Damao saw that his situation had attracted attention and stood up, saying. I think there are some people who are quite suspicious about this matter. 
This person is skilled in cooking and often helps widow Chin. He can handle my family's chickens without even realizing it. I believe he has this ability, and everyone knows who it is. Although Su Dumao did not give a name, the whole courtyard looked at He Yuzhu sitting on the side with his eyes closed to rest. The second uncle was already angry that He Yuzhu needed to call him himself. Now, seeing how disrespectful he was, he slammed his cup onto the table and pointed at He Yuzhu, shouting loudly. Silly Zhu, what's your attitude? Everyone is discussing the matter of the chicken thief. Can you honestly explain that you stole it? He Yuzhu was taken aback for a moment, not expecting that this could also affect him. I couldn't help but frown and look at Su Dumao and his bangs. It seems that these two people are really born with a grudge against themselves, otherwise they wouldn't have fought for most of their lives later on. Su Dumao, are you looking for a cigarette? If your chicken is lost, you can go find it. Why point fingers at me? If you can't provide evidence today, I'll beat you to death. Do you believe that? Su Dumao looked at He Yuzhu standing up and was startled. From childhood to adulthood, the two of them fought each other and, like a conditioned reflex, stood up and took two steps back. He said, Silly Zhu, one person does things and the other takes care of them. Who are you? When you finished work today, you were sneaking around with a lunchbox. You said, it's not you stealing chicken, who is it? It's your uncle, look for a fight. He usually rushed straight towards Su Dumao, preparing to teach him a lesson to avoid being falsely accused. But the others wouldn't just watch, they just grabbed He Yuzhu and Su Dumao and separated them. He Yuzhu sat down and said. A chicken cannot run away for no reason, someone must have taken it. As adults, we have to work all day long, and when we come back from work, the chicken will disappear. It must have been lost during the day. There is no one in the yard either. If you catch a chicken, you will definitely eat it. Nowadays, every day with cabbage and radish, there is a slight smell of meat that no one can smell. I guess it might be someone's child who was greedy and stole a chicken to eat. My suggestion is just a suggestion. Each household should call out their own child and ask, if a child can't finish eating such a big old hen, there must be an accomplice. Upon hearing He Yuzhu's words, Qin Huairu immediately became nervous and pondered over something, as if she wanted to find someone to help her out. He Yuzhu stared at her and saw Qin Huairu looking at him. He followed closely and looked at an old man, as if the two had formed some kind of tacit understanding. After that, he lowered his head and remained silent. Qin Huairu naturally knew that her own child had eaten Su Damao's chicken. The children couldn't even eat dinner anymore, and there was still a smell of chicken on their clothes, which could be smelled not far away. She was stunned when she heard Silly Zhu's statement. Originally, she wanted Silly Zhu to take the blame, but now it seems that she can only hope to settle this matter with Yi Zhonghai. Standing up in the middle of the bangs, he said, Silly Zhu makes a lot of sense. If a chicken disappears in broad daylight, it definitely won't disappear for no reason. Everyone works in the factory during broad daylight and doesn't have the time to come back to steal the chicken. Silly Zhu can't be the one who stole the chicken. Maybe it's really someone's child who is greedy. The second uncle stood up and said these words, not to say that he really supports Silly Zhu, nor that he really thinks what he usually said is reasonable, mainly to show his sense of existence and make everyone believe in his authority. The third master also nodded in agreement, but he believed in Silly Zhu's statement. After all, this chicken was still there yesterday and in the morning, so it must have been lost in the afternoon and noon. The old man understood Qin Huiru's gaze and made an agreement with him, but he couldn't give up directly. Instead, he asked the children to come out and ask questions. But when he is ready to reconcile, he may ask He Yuzhu to compensate Su Dumao himself, and this matter will be considered over. Qin Huiru didn't know Yi Zhonghai's plan, so she stood up calmly and said, Grandpa, it's really cold. The children still have to go to school tomorrow, and now they're all asleep. It's not good to cry and freeze. 
Even if the children steal food, they can't accept this criticism in person. I see, why don't you guys find a time tomorrow during the day to talk to the children about the dangers of theft and educate them? What do you think? Yi Zhonghai had long speculated that the chicken was stolen by the stick meme. He had just made a deal with Qin Huairu and quickly said, this is also true. Why don't we talk to the children separately tomorrow and see what you see? Lu Haizhong was somewhat unwilling, but Qin Huairu didn't want to give up the opportunity she had finally seized. She quickly said, Second Master, you still need to come and organize the children's affairs. They all listen to you, and you must educate them well. Upon hearing this, Lu Haizhong instantly felt his authority recognized and nodded with a satisfied smile. Qin Huairu took advantage of the hot iron and said to Yen Bugue, Third Master, you are the most cultured person in the yard. Tomorrow, this matter cannot be separated from you. You need to talk to the children about moral education. The three gentlemen all had reasonable excuses, and the matter of catching chickens seemed to have been successfully resolved. Each family also accepts Qin Huairu's feelings, after all, they are not clear now whether their own children are stealing Su Dumao's chicken. Of course, they hope that this matter will be reduced to a minor matter. Seeing everyone preparing to end the meeting, Su Damao and Lu Xiaowa became anxious and said, What should I do with my chicken? It's just lost like this. Someone must compensate, right? That's an old hen laying eggs. An old man turned his head and said, Su Damao, why are you in such a hurry? This may have been done by the children. As an old man in the yard, I compensated them. I'll give you three yuan and you can go buy a chicken yourself. All right. Although Su Damao was somewhat dissatisfied, he saw that everyone else in the yard had dispersed, so he could only admit his misfortune. He took an old man's three yuan and went home with his wife. Lu Xiao didn't feel it yet, but Su Damao was almost furious. He felt like he had been fooled, but unfortunately, he couldn't find the chicken thief yet. He usually did not get too involved in this matter, and there were not many good people in the yard. He made up his mind to get less involved with the people in the yard, and besides necessary things, he would become an invisible person, deaf and mute. Qin Huairu saw the gesture behind an old man and nervously looked around at the people before quietly returning home. She didn't see He Yuzhu following behind and also noticed this gesture, but didn't understand what it meant. She always felt that this meant something else. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Siblings Conversation You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Siblings Conversation After coming back from work, Hiyushue stopped his bike and asked inside, Brother, where are the good meals and dishes you promised me? When Hiyushu saw his sister coming back, he took the pig head stewed on the stove and said to her, This is not it. Hurry up and eat that dry food. Why is it pig head meat? Didn't it mean eating chicken? He rainwater saw that it was pork head meat and immediately asked curiously. Don't worry about the chicken anymore. There's been a thief in our yard. Su Damao's family lost a chicken, and I've become a key suspect. Fortunately, I brought back pig head meat today, otherwise your brother and I would really be chicken thieves. I can't explain it clearly. After hearing this, he rainwater looked at his brother in shock, as if he couldn't believe it was true. Is it really fake? Did the chicken thief find it? Is it still necessary to search? That stinky guy from Bang Ji comes to me all day to steal things. I saw their whole family being pitiful, so I didn't say anything about him stealing things, but I didn't expect him to steal a chicken. As he usually spoke, he felt that his predecessor had a considerable responsibility. Brother, what did you do in the end? He he, Qin Huairu stirred things up a bit, but the chicken thief was not caught. The old man compensated the chicken money, so let's just forget about this matter. As he usually thought of something, he patted his head and said, Sister, I see that I have some responsibility for this matter. If I lock the door, Bang Ji won't develop a habit of sneaking around. So, tomorrow I'll lock my door, 
which can be considered the first step in educating Bang Ji. Brother, you can't do this. Qin's family is so difficult because of your help. If you lock the door, how will they look at us? They can't even think I gave you the idea. As soon as he Rainwater finished speaking, he Yuzhu could sense the implied meaning from it. Is he Rainwater worried about being misunderstood by Qin Huairu, or is he worried that Qin Huairu will spoil he Yuzhu and eventually find her head? Don't say anything, I have a plan in mind. Hurry up and have a meal, then others will come and grab it. Upon hearing this, he Rainwater quickly lowered his head and started eating, as if someone was really trying to grab it. However, he usually found in his memory the scene of the stick meme coming to his house to grab food with he Rainwater. You, eat slowly. There shouldn't be anyone coming to grab food today. They've all eaten enough, but you white-eyed wolf, I raised you, but you turned to others. Brother, why am I so narrow-minded? I'm not good to you. You said, you're getting married soon, but you're still single, and I'm not going to introduce you to your brother. By the way, what's going on between you and that little police officer, Kohler? What time is it? Once it's settled, I'll get things done for the spring festival. Okay, there are still two months left. If I get married early, I will save dim sum. I can also be regarded as worthy of my mother's spirit in heaven. Since the system instilled memories, the memories of Zhao Xucheng and He Yuzhu have mixed, and the two are of similar ages, so Zhao Xucheng's feelings for He Rainwater are just like his own younger sisters. As an only child, he was also eager to have a brother and sisters, so the appearance of He Yuzhu made him feel very strange. Of course, He Yuzhu and the rain depend on each other and have deep feelings. Qin Huairu saw through the window that he Rainwater had entered the northern room to eat, smelling the smell of meat and constantly swallowing saliva. However, she had not tasted the meat for a while. Whenever there is some meat in the house, most of it goes into the belly of the stick stem, and the rest is eaten by Xiao Dang, Huai Hua, and Jia Zhang. I can only eat some cabbage and radish, and dip some meat soup in the steamed bun. She felt that today's silly pillar was a bit different, especially at the conference where she spoke confidently and was not foolish at all. She certainly didn't know that he Yuzhu had already changed people, and the previous silly pillar had long disappeared. Having nothing to say all night, he Yuzhu's biological clock is still very punctual. As a chef, he works in the morning every day, but he is relatively more free. At least after finishing work, he can freely manage his time. He usually walked to the factory, looking at the constantly increasing wealth of the system interface in his mind, with a smile on his lips. I walked around the cafeteria casually, checked the work of my apprentices, and then sat on a stool, holding an enamel cup, brewing a cup of tea, and took a beautiful sip. Ah, I made a pleasant sound and waited for today's end of work. He usually feels that his current life is good, except for not having a wife, everything else is very good. As a contented person, there is no need to focus on how to earn money or work hard every day. He doesn't feel that there is any room for improvement in his current life. Just as he usually was feeling comfortable, a person walked into the kitchen door and it was Qin Huairu. The people in the kitchen saw Qin Huairu come in and looked at he usually with frowns and eyes. After all, the whole factory now knew about their ambiguous relationship, only he Yuzhu didn't understand. He Yuzhu noticed everyone's gaze, frowned, and turned around to see Qin Huairu. He suddenly understood that his reputation in the factory didn't seem very good, and he had to start a family early. Silly Zhu, come out and I'll tell you something. He Yuzhu looked at the others and frowned, saying, What's up? Can't we just say it here? No way. He Yuzhu nodded, put down his tea cup, and then followed Qin Huairu out until he stopped on the path behind the cafeteria. After Qin Huairu stopped, she kept observing He Yuzhu's performance, but found that he was really different from him now. He used to be very enthusiastic, but now he is neither cold nor hot. She thought it was because she had previously mentioned introducing her cousin to Silly Zhu, but she never mentioned it again. It seems that Silly Zhu felt that she was deceiving him. 
she was planning to take this opportunity to talk and see if that's really the case, then use this excuse to ask Silly Zhu to help her get some food. He Yuzhu remained silent with his hands behind his back, wanting to see what Qin Huairu was trying to say. All right, big man, you're still so narrow dot minded. Isn't it just my cousin's business? Don't worry, I've already sent someone to deliver a message to her. Let her come this Sunday and let you meet. How about that? He Yuzhu was stunned for a moment, not realizing that he was looking for him just for this matter. Pillar, if our two families get married, don't forget Qin Jia. Help our family more, right? He Yuzhu just responded and said, Okay, Qin Jia, it's really done. Thank you for sure. Qin Huairu saw He Yuzhu looking at her and shyly approached to tidy up his clothes. Pillar, a big man who doesn't know how to dress up, it's time to find a wife for you. He Yuzhu suddenly became even more confused. He didn't expect Qin Huairu to be so passionate about him. What's really going on between the two of them? Seeing Qin Huairu almost turning around and leaving without waiting for her to say anything, she frowned. Just as I was about to return to the cafeteria, I found a pair of shoes in the corner, which looked like a woman's shoes. I suddenly understood why Qin Huairu had acted so affectionately just now. It turned out she was waiting here. Damn it, I'm still being tricked. Day by day, although Qin Huairu talked about her cousin, he Yuzhu still subconsciously distanced himself from her relationship. Even when I come back from work, I never carry my lunchbox in my hand, as if I had changed my ways overnight. He Yuzhu certainly won't treat himself unfairly, but he always comes back from dinner with his disciples in the cafeteria. As for my younger sister, she is currently busy preparing for her wedding, and with the addition of being stationed in the factory, there is no need to worry about food. Due to the loss of the food brought back by He Yuzhu, the living standards of the Qin Huai Ru family plummeted. From the past, I occasionally saw a bit of meat on the table, white flour mantu. Now, everyone has two wawatu, and only one bowl of noodles is left for each person. Bang Gung rolled his eyes and looked at Qin Huairu with dissatisfaction, saying, Xiao Dang, Huai Hua, you guys wait. Tomorrow, I'll go to Silzu's place to get some delicious food. Stick meme, how many times have I told you? Don't call me stupid, call me Uncle Heat. Dot. Qin Huairu didn't want Bang Gung to call He Yuzhu that way because she knew He Yuzhu didn't actually like that title. Jia Zhang was no longer willing and said, My grandson can call him whatever he wants. Why, do you feel sorry? Mom, what are you saying? What are you saying, talking about silly Zhu? This is heartless. It's been a few days and you haven't brought us a lunchbox back. Don't worry about your sister's matter. Wait for Silly Zhu to come and beg you before we talk. Qin Huairu shook her head when she heard Jia Zhang's words and said, This is not possible. My sister will come tomorrow and let them meet. If it really works, can my sister forget to help us? Ah, I'm just unnecessary. I've dragged down this family, but you have to keep my son clean. As long as I don't die, you don't want to find anyone else. Let's die that heart before it's too late. Jia Zhang tilted her eyes and looked at Qin Huairu, as if she would cry and make a scene whenever she said a little bit of unwillingness. Qin Huairu had no choice but to enter the steel plant and replace her father, Bang Gung. If she really got married separately and Jia Zhang was not willing, she would have to be laid off. Who else would want her? He Yuzhu returned home and looked at his somewhat messy room only to realize that Qin Huairu had helped clean it up before, but since his iron general opened the door, she rarely came in. I simply tidied up and prepared to wash all the clothes I was wearing on Sunday. I just washed the remaining socks and underwear by hand. Rainwater returned on this day and said upon entering the door, Brother, don't say your sister doesn't think of you. I either have a classmate or the younger sister of the eldest daughter. In law of the third master's family, Yu Haitang. She is a beautiful woman. Good sister, you're too kind to your brother. Okay, you can make an appointment with her another day and we'll meet. Brother, 
Are you really willing? I heard Qin Jia introduced his cousin to you. Why, it's not appropriate. Hi, I haven't seen it yet, but it's always good to want to take a look. It's not like comparing goods from three different stores. Brother, I've noticed that you've really changed. You wouldn't have said that before. I can't keep it unchanged. Your brother and I are almost thirty years old, and we don't have a wife yet. If we don't find a wife again, the old he family will lose their popularity. Okay, brother, if you say that, I'll definitely help you. Just wait for my good news. As he usually watched he rainwater walk out, he suddenly showed a smile. He didn't expect to be able to get involved with Yu Hai Tang so early. If she could get it right in one step, there would be no future fiancé A for her to borrow a house, but eventually she would be hooked up by Su Damao and choose someone else's business. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Qin Jingru Enters the City You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Qin Jingru enters the city Sunday arrived, and Qin Jingru wore her favorite cotton jacket and went to the city. I heard that there was a movie in the factory today, so I followed Qin Huairu directly to watch the movie. At first, Su Damao didn't pay attention. When he saw Qin Huairu and Qin Jingru sitting in the seats he had prepared for the factory leadership, he shouted loudly, Is that what you can do? Qin Jingru turned her head and with just one glance, Su Damao couldn't pull it out. She had never seen such a simple gaze, such a watery face. Oh, who should I be, Qin Jia? Who is this girl? She looks so agile. Qin Huiru didn't know what Su Damao was up to when he saw her, but she said, Water spirit, even water spirit has nothing to do with you. You're already married, just stare at me. Su Damao looked at Qin Jingru and felt very itchy in his heart. If it weren't for the crowds here, he would have wanted to hug Qin Jingru directly. With a smile on his face, he said, Listen to the conversation, are you here to introduce someone to the girl? Qin Jingru said, Yes, I'm going to introduce my sister to Hiyuzhu. Su Damao didn't react for a moment and said in surprise, Hiyuzhu, why is this name so familiar? Is it from our factory? Qin Huiru looked at him and said, Are you pretending to be foolish? Her words were accented with foolishness, and Su Damao immediately remembered that silly pillar was just a yuzhu. Su Damao suddenly felt that a watery little cabbage was about to be arched by he yuzhu, a foolish pig. He stared wide and said, Are you foolish Chu? Looking at Qin Jingru's curious gaze, she said, Sister, have you seen it? You can ask anyone in this factory who he usually is. If you know someone, the camera will see it. I'll give it to you directly. If you're talking about silly Zhu, if there's someone you don't know, I'll give it to you as well. Qin Huiru said, you can put your movie on, don't just mess around here. Su Damao pretended to be anxious and said, it's not about dismantling the platform. Qin Jie, you didn't do it like that. You're such a clever girl. You want him to marry a foolish and silly cook, and you'll reveal the truth. Qin Huiru said unwillingly, who's stupid? Qin Jingru couldn't sit still and couldn't believe that her sister really introduced a fool to her. She asked anxiously, Sister, is what he said true? Qin Huiru said, don't listen to him. The two of them are sworn enemies. What good words can be said from his mouth? Although Qin Jingru heard her sister's explanation, she was still worried that he Yuzhu would really be the same as Su Damao said, so she planned to say it another day. He Yuzhu learned the news, took a sip of tea, and sat happily on the stool, without getting angry at Qin Jingru's return. Ma Hua was absent-mindedly cutting vegetables on the side, his mind full of movie-related matters. Master, what do you mean by Ashima? A big girl, She's quite beautiful. You guys shouldn't watch this movie while you're here. Looking back for your wife, everyone looks like Ju Beiji's second aunt. I can't watch, neither can you. Aren't you single too? Hey, what's wrong with me not getting married? I've never seen anything before. 
I've never seen a sheep on a tree, and I've never seen a sheep defecating. Ma Hua saw He Yuzhu remain calm and thought he was still angry about Su Dumao's involvement in the blind date. He said, Master, you're still angry. Why don't I go to the square and bring her to the cafeteria? All right, you go ahead. If you go, flirt and flirt halfway, you won't be your daughter. In law. Master, look at what you're saying, can I still stir fry Shenyang? He Yuzhu didn't continue as his marriage was not in a hurry. Besides Qin Jingru, there are also Yu Hai Tang and Teacher Ran waiting. The main reason is that in this era, there is a great emphasis on male-female relationships, and we cannot mess with them. If we choose a good person, we must live a down-to-dot-earth life. If it's attracting bees and butterflies, it's not just saliva stars that drown people. The law also does not allow it. A crime of hooliganism can prevent one from getting out. After the afternoon movie was over, he usually tidied up the kitchen and strolled home. Of course, this time he still brought a lunch box to let Qin Jingru know that he had meat to eat with him. This era is very poor, and those who can eat enough are considered good families. The chef brings back some leftover food from the company cafeteria, which is an unwritten rule, but it is also a principle that the people are not punished and the officials are not punished. In the original plot, when Hiyuzhu was falsely accused of stealing a chicken, he couldn't argue where his chicken came from and didn't directly admit that it was taken from the cafeteria. He was worried that someone might take advantage of the situation. There have been many glances at Hiyuzhu these days, but how do they know that Hiyuzhu is someone with cheats? When he puts his lunchbox in his personal space, who knows? He Yuzhu is not worried at all about taking Qin Jingru, as long as Su Damao and Qin Huairu don't cause trouble and easily. After all, in today's era, rural areas are even poorer, and the working class is protected by the state. However, rural areas still have collective economy, and their own families do not have land. Working for the collective is all about cheating and playing tricks. Most of the grain they produce is given to public grain, and their own families receive very little. There is not much entertainment in the countryside. Once you encounter someone who goes to the countryside to watch a movie, it's really exciting and grateful. The whole village, young and old, gather to watch a movie. The village chief and others treated the projectionists well and even gave away various local chickens and cured meat as gifts before leaving, in order to let the projectionists play another movie and even come here again next time they have the opportunity. Every time Su Damao goes to the countryside to play movies, he often takes gifts from rural communes and is not afraid of what others say, after all, these are gifts that others are willing to give, and they cannot be considered as corruption or bribery. He Yuzhu certainly doesn't care about the chef taking things from the cafeteria, but the food and vegetables cannot be moved, only the leftover scraps can be taken away. Walking all the way back home, He Yuzhu saw that the lights in Qin's widow's house were brightly lit. It seemed that Qin Jingru did not go back directly and was preparing to stay in the city for the night. Just as He Yuzhu was about to close the door and go to sleep, a knocking sound came from the door. Upon opening the door, Qin Huairu stood in front of it, feeling aggrieved. Silly Zhu, is there someone like you? I kindly introduced my younger sister to you, took you over, and avoided me from seeing you. Why, my cousin doesn't have feelings for you, right? He Yuzhu couldn't figure out what Qin Huairu was up to. He opened the door and prepared to let her in, but he didn't expect Qin Huairu to follow closely and say, don't follow me in the future. We also need to pay attention to our distance. Anyway, you are all my brother. In law. We are not only neighbors but also relatives. We just need to walk around frequently in the future. Oh, look, this is the food I brought for my sister. I'll take it to her. It's getting late now. Tomorrow morning, you can meet and talk. She walked into the room without hesitation and walked out with a lunchbox in hand. He Yuzhu almost laughed in anger. With the things he brought back, he could only enter their house. He couldn't eat or use them anymore. But he doesn't lack this food either, just feed the dog. 
The other people in the yard heard Chin Huiru's voice and really thought she was a good person. It's not a problem for Silly Zhu to approach the widow's door. Now that it's okay, just get married. He Yu Zhu was too lazy to argue with her. When she went out, he closed the door directly, inserted the door latch, and prepared that no matter how Qin Huiru knocked on the door in the future, he wouldn't open it. This is really yellow mud falling into the crotch of my pants, I can't speak clearly. Upon hearing Qin Huiru's words, Qin Jingru immediately had some speculations about her sister's relationship with He Yuzhu. However, she had not yet met He Yuzhu and could only hope that it was not as she had imagined. The next morning, Qin Jingru didn't meet with He Yuzhu and bought a ticket to take the car back. It's not that she doesn't want to see her, but rather that Qin Huiru hasn't mentioned this matter. After listening all night to how their family is suffering, it sounds like she still needs to take care of her after getting married. He Yuzhu didn't care whether Qin Jingru had left or not. He went to work early in the morning and when he picked up lunch, he saw Qin Huiru hooked up with Su Damao, chatting and laughing. Before He Yuzhu responds, Qin Huiru enters the kitchen with the mantu and vegetables Su Damao bought for her. Qin Huiru looked pitifully at He Yuzhu and said, Pillar, can you help me load a few pounds of stick noodles? My family really can't cook it. This is really not good, sister. If you say there's leftover food or something, I can still help you take some. No one says anything about it. What is Bangzi Mian? It's stealing, thief. I really can't get it done. Just now, I went to my men's workshop to find Lao Yang and changed his food ticket for next month. But what should I do next month? I've been pushing for a month now, when will it end? He Yuzhu suddenly wanted to laugh. Oh, if you can't get by, why don't you come find someone else to steal something for you? That's not possible, it's a matter of professional ethics. Come on, you're not usually smooth. He Yuzhu is not willing to listen to this anymore. He brought something to their house and even had some problems. No, sister, when did I take food? All I took were leftovers from the factory director's dinner. I exchanged mantu with food stamps. Qin Huiru leaned directly against He Yuzhu upon seeing this, shaking her arm with her hand and saying, What a silly pillar, can you help sister? He Yuzhu felt the softness of the woman, but still refused and said, This can't be done. So, I'll go back tonight and send you some stick noodles. Is that okay, sister? Qin Huiru saw the expression on He Yuzhu's face, and immediately realized that she was too close. She quickly set aside, as if she had been bullied, and said, Zhu, I didn't expect you to be the same person. What's the matter? I ran to my men's workshop. Gu Depeo took advantage of me. Let me take two mantu, and Su Dumao took advantage of me. If I asked you for a few kilograms of noodles, you also took advantage of me. I am a widow, and I have to be bullied if I am a widow. No, it's okay. What's wrong with you? You'll just cry and cry. He Yuzhu was stunned. She didn't expect Qin Huiru to perform such a play. Now everyone in the cafeteria knew that she really couldn't wash herself off by jumping into the Yellow River. Qin Huiru didn't expect that He Yuzhu had already changed someone, not to mention completely different, but at least his thinking and logic were different, which completely exceeded his own plan. No, Su Damao, this grandson, Qin Jie, don't worry. I'll go back tonight and see how I can deal with him. Qin Huiru said anxiously, No, he just let me into the warehouse. Well, as long as you don't go, what's up? Pillar, you keep your word, you have to make my own decisions. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Qin Huiru's Careful Machine You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 6 Qin Huiru's Careful Machine After Qin Huiru left, he Yuzhu pondered and felt that he had been deceived. He recalled what had happened before and immediately understood that Qin Huiru had made a deal with Su Damao, but he didn't want to meet Su Damao's requirements just by a few mantu, so he went to the kitchen and asked Yuzhu to take the lead for him. 
There was also a scene like this in the original plot, but at that time, He Yuzhu said she was using a beauty trick. Qin Huairu directly took off her clothes, scared away He Yuzhu, and immediately obtained the desired food. He also asked He Yuzhu to teach Su Dumao a lesson, thus getting rid of Su Dumao's entanglement. But thinking about what she said so many times at that time, I didn't hesitate to pay attention to him, and I only believed in He Yuzhu. I'm sorry. How many times has this sentence revealed its meaning? How many times before, why didn't you come to find Su Damao, just this time you took Su Damao's mantu? Or did you say you received it before, but paid the price at that time? I don't want to pay the price this time, that's why I asked He Yuzhu to make the decision. He Yuzhu watched Ma Hua and others appear in the cafeteria, and his reputation was really ruined. Now his relationship with Qin Huairu has been established. Everyone saw Qin Huairu tidy up her clothes and walk out, I don't know what they thought the two of them were doing inside. However, although He Yuzhu said he would teach Su Damao a lesson, he did not follow the original plot and instead prepared to talk to Su Damao after work. After thinking for a moment, He Yuzhu decided to take a look at the warehouse. In case Su Damao was really waiting somewhere, he would have to teach him a lesson. When I quietly walked to the warehouse, He Yuzhu quietly glanced through the window at Qin Huairu. Qin Jie, didn't you go find He Yuzhu? Why did you come with me into the warehouse? Pooh, you bad guy. I was just trying to cover up for you. If I didn't say this to silly Zhu and start making a fuss, everyone in the factory wouldn't know about it. Your wife won't be making a fuss with you then. He Yuzhu can't bear this anymore. Alright, it turns out he's really using himself. This matter definitely can't just be settled like this. After thinking for a moment, he walked directly into the factory building and walked over to the women who were eating. After sitting down, he said, Aunties, the situation is not good anymore. Now there is a situation where I want to take advantage of all the female workers at Guangdao. Seeing the female workers looking at him, he usually continued, Aunt Chen, you are an expert in governing these bastards. You are in charge of this matter. Aunt Chen said angrily, you've looked at him. It's necessary. A female worker said, are you referring to Su Damao? Those who know me, Sister Hua, I haven't even said who it is yet, you guessed it. I'll just say it, don't worry, I'll go ahead and start making fun of him. Let's go, let's go. He Yuzhu watched them group up to the warehouse and burst into laughter. Seeing Yi Zhonghai standing quietly on the side, he immediately smiled and left. Hua Jia and others arrived at the warehouse based on He Yuzhu's message, but when they received it, they saw Qin Huairu and Su Damao getting dressed, and were immediately stunned. Qin Huairu didn't expect anyone to appear. She thought He Yuzhu was really causing trouble to Su Damao this afternoon, but she didn't expect it to come now. Her calculations were completely wrong. Wu Wu, you guys are here. Su Damao is tampering with me. If you don't come again, she will force me to strip naked. Qin Huairu suddenly felt a shower of pear blossoms, as if she was really being forced, hurriedly putting on her clothes. Sister Hua and others didn't know the truth and thought it was really like this. They rushed in and stripped off Su Damao's clothes, comforting Qin Huairu kindly. He Yuzhu didn't expect Su Damao to let Qin Huairu escape a disaster. He is not suitable to appear now, so he can only quietly walk away. Su Damao was sent to the police station, but due to his father's connections and the fact that the workers in the factory thought nothing had happened, they only criticized education and released Su Damao. Even so, Su Damao was not doing well. The whole hospital knew about this matter in the afternoon. The first uncle was very angry and contacted the second and third uncles to prepare for a meeting with Su Damao. Jia Zhang was also at the table. Looking at Qin Huairu, who had been wronged because he asked for a man to, he said angrily, don't be wronged. Can't you ask? Qin Huairu lowered her head and ate the steamed buns, saying, it's really not what you think. Jia Zhang looked at Qin Huairu with a smile on her face, 
but she heard about what was happening in the factory today from others. Although Su Damao intentionally violated others in the story, she did not believe that Qin Huairu was truly innocent. This manta came for nothing. One and a half, I believe. Five big white flower mantu. When you were freeloading. Qin Huairu said with a grievance, anyway, I didn't do anything wrong. Jia Zhang's family knew how the white flower manta came from, just like the grain brought back by Qin Huairu before, it was all bought in exchange, but no news had been heard before, but this time it was different. Su Damao went to the police station, and many people knew about it. If there is no reasonable explanation, Qin Huairu's reputation will be gone, and their Jia family's reputation will also be bad. That's why Jia Zhang's family is targeting this big white flower mantu. Anyway, this mantu is not good. Bang Yu was not happy. He thought that the big white flower mantu was much better than Wawatu and Bangzi Kanji a few days ago. He looked up and said, Grandma, my mother worked hard to make mantu. Why don't you stop eating it? Qin Huairu heard her child protect herself so much and thought about what she had done. She immediately put down her dishes and ran out to cry. Su Damao and He Yuzhu did not participate, but it is said that he refuted with reason and evidence at the time, saying that he injured his back and asked Qin Huairu to catch him. With the testimony of Qin Huairu, this matter has come to an end. He Yuzhu doesn't think this matter will end like this. Su Damao has suffered such a big loss and will definitely not give up easily. It's just that he doesn't know how he will counterattack when the time comes. Lu Xiaoyi and Su Damao had a falling out, giving them a fierce and aggressive scolding. They had originally planned to divorce, but in the face of Su Damao's sweet words, they had no choice but to wait and see what happened. Easy I, believe me, I'm not really playing a rogue, I'm just itching a bit. Qin Jie helped me scratch it, but who knew it was just visible? Who knows if what you're saying is true or false, but Su Damao, I tell you, if you really dare to flirt outside, don't say I didn't warn you, divorce. At night, after everyone fell asleep, they entered the courtyard. Qin Huairu stood up stealthily and walked to the corner next to her ear, as if waiting for someone. After a while, a man walked over and scolded her, Qin Huairu, do you really have something to do with Su Damao this afternoon? Grandpa, you don't want to trust me anymore. I really have nothing to do with him, but our family is really at a loss. If there's no more chewing corn, I really have to sell myself. Huairu, with me and Zhu Zhu helping you, how could you get to that point? Oh my, don't move your hands and feet. Talking about others, you just watch our family being bullied and don't even help me speak. I have to uphold my authority. Besides, last time Bada Gung stole a chicken from Su Damao's family, I didn't put it on your side. I don't care, there's really no food left at home this time. You need to think of a way for me. Of course, I'm not bringing you ten pounds of stick noodles, enough for you to eat for a while. Hurry up, give me a son, and I usually pay you my salary. What are you thinking? I'm a widow pregnant, how can I be a good person? What are you afraid of? Isn't there a pillar? When you marry him, we can't raise you together. Don't mention the pillars, they seem to have changed a bit lately and they haven't even paid attention to me. It's okay, he just wants to find a wife. You often go to help him wash clothes, tidy up the room, and see if that girl can take a liking to him. Besides, the factory now knows that you two have an ambiguous relationship, so he can still marry someone else. I found out that you are really bad. Su Damao is also sneaking around. You actually want silly Zhu to raise your child for you. You are really shameless. So what's wrong? I raised him since I was young, shouldn't I have a son? Yes, yes, you're right. I have to go back. My mother dot in dot law knows, and we're all done. Okay, go back early and get pregnant as soon as possible. Okay, I got it. After Qin Huairu turned around and went back, the smile on her face suddenly disappeared. She curled her lips and said, Pooh, old man, 
you still want me to have a son for you. Why don't you die? Fortunately, I found someone to get an intrauterine device, IUD, inserted. If I were really pregnant and silly Zhu didn't take the IUD, how could I survive? Every time I hold a few pounds of stick noodles and say I'm a good person. What good things do I think? A few pounds of stick noodles trade for a chubby kid. Dream it. Huairu, what did you do? After Qin Huairu entered the room, Jia Zhang asked leisurely. Qin Huairu was so scared that she almost sat on the ground. After a while, she regained her composure and said, I went to the restroom and ran into an old man who gave me a few pounds of stick noodles. We can relax a bit now. Really? Thank you very much, but I'll tell him in the future not to deliver at night. We should let everyone in the yard know. Got it, mom, let's go to bed. We still have to go to work tomorrow. Well, go to sleep. The two of them lay under the covers, neither speaking, but their hearts were restless, each facing their own affairs. Qin Huairu was worried that Jia Zhang might have learned something, whether she had just woken up or pretended. Jia Zhang, on the other hand, silently shed tears, feeling sorry for her son, but asking her to contribute three dollars a month that Qin Huairu gave her was beyond her imagination. Son, don't blame your mother. As long as Qin Huairu doesn't leave this family, anything will do. But don't worry, I will definitely keep this money for Bangan and use it for him to marry his wife. Don't worry, it will take another seven or eight years. Yi Zhonghai, this old man, still wants to have a son. He didn't take any measures back then, so he didn't even have a son. He even drove away He Da Qing, and he has been a destitute for his whole life. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 San De Ye's Little Abacus You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 San De Ye's Little Abacus After He Yuzhu woke up in the morning and was about to go to work, he saw Qin Huairu come in directly, like a hostess, packing up the clothes he was preparing to change, and then preparing to go out. He Yuzhu was stunned and didn't understand what she wanted to do. Qin Jie, what are you doing? Pillar, even as a big man, you don't know how to tidy up the house. The house is so messy, and no one washes the clothes. Yesterday, you gave me some stick noodles. What Qin Jie can help you with is to wash and brush. Don't mind, don't worry, I'm just helping you tidy up. When you find your wife, Qin will disappear automatically. As Qin Huairu spoke, her eyes began to turn red, as if she was talking about a sad place, and she hurriedly walked out. He Yuzhu looked at Qin Huairu's distant figure and didn't understand what she meant. He wasn't in such a hurry a few days ago. Is it because he's pregnant and wants to find the successor? He is too lazy to think so much, as long as he holds on to the bottom line, no matter what methods they use, he cannot shake himself. After washing up, the door was not locked, so I picked up my empty lunch box and prepared to go to work. Seeing the third master Yen Bugue preparing to ride his bicycle to work, he said, Third master, are you going to work? Pillar, you should also go to work, Yen Bugue helped his eyes and said to Hiyuzhu. Yes, go to work. Yen Bugue suddenly thought of something. Previously, Qin Huairu was planning to introduce her sister to Silly Zhu, just to get something. If I could introduce my wife to Silly Zhu, I would definitely not lose my own benefits. If I could hang Silly Zhu like Qin Huairu, I would gain even more benefits. Pillar, you don't have any objects yet, do you? He Yuzhu was taken aback for a moment, thinking he was about to introduce his daughter. In. Law Yu Li's sister Yu Hai Tang to him. He immediately said happily, That's right, not yet. Why, third master, are you planning to introduce me to one? Third Grandpa. Not bad, you're lucky. There's a teacher named Ran Chiuya in our school, who is the homeroom teacher. He looks handsome and has a good physique. How about that? If you don't mind, I'll ask what Ran means. When he usually heard that it was not Yu Hai Tang, but teacher Ran, he felt a little disappointed, but soon any disappointment disappeared. 
Teacher Ran is also a good choice. She is knowledgeable, courteous, gentle, and has a good personality. She can distinguish right from wrong. She has really become a good choice, but she can't wait until she becomes her lover in the future. Cheng, third grandpa, why don't you say you're my third grandpa? If you really succeed, I have to show my filial piety to you. Not to mention anything else, at least two pounds of thick fat. Upon hearing this, the third master smiled triumphantly and said, All right, let's go to work first. I'll let you know if there's any news. He Yuzhu happily went to work, and He Yuzhu was preparing to introduce himself to a partner. The third master was also interested. Who should he choose then? Is it Teacher Ran or Yu Hai Tang? Oh, it's really a worry of happiness. The third master saw a silly pillar swaying and humming a song as he walked away. He immediately showed a successful calculation expression on his face, got on the bike, and left. Of course, he usually knows that having two women at the same time is a very dangerous thing, especially in this special era, where promiscuous relationships between men and women can be very serious. Not to mention anything else, just because Qin Huairu often visits her own home, those girls with ideas can immediately stop thinking and know the seriousness of the situation. Now he has a mindset that if he has an introduction, he will choose it himself. If he really thinks it's suitable, then he will settle down and live a down dot to dot earth life. If you really think everything is suitable, you can only choose one of them. If you really encounter something that you have to do, it's not a big deal to make her wait for you for a few years. After the reform and opening up, you can open up a bit and have the money to support yourself. It's not a big deal. After work, he usually suddenly remembered about the engagement of the third master and felt like he had miscalculated. In the original plot, the third master was just hanging himself and didn't mention this matter to teacher Ran. Even after the silly pillar gave him a gift, he didn't mention it. After being tricked once, Silly Zhu directly dismantled and sold the bicycle tires of the third master, and in the end, he almost got into the police station. Now that I'm here, should I wait for Yen Bugue to contact Teacher Ran or go directly to the school to see Teacher Ran? Should we reject Mr. San or pretend not to know and deliberately fall for it, waiting for Teacher Ran to come and visit the Bonging family one day to explain the situation and further gain Teacher Ran's favor? If we do this, we might just get married at the same level. After all, in the original plot, after the second meeting between Teacher Ran and Hiyuzhu, they only had a slight liking for Hiyuzhu because they knew that the third master was causing trouble. If it weren't for knowing that the first time we met was at a bicycle shop, seeing Hiyuzhu selling bicycle tires, and knowing that it was third uncle's, perhaps we could have made friends at that time. If it weren't for Qin Huairu, who knew that he Yuzhu had feelings for Ran Shuya because Qin Jingru was with Su Damao, and directly took the initiative to tell Ran Shuya about the matter of the third master, Ran Shuya would have paid his respects directly to he Yuzhu. Unfortunately, Qin Huairu was still superior in her skills. She didn't wait for Silly Zhu to establish a relationship with Ran Shuya. Instead, she went straight into Silly Zhu's house to tidy up her room, or directly talked to Teacher Ran about her relationship with Silly Zhu. Teacher Ran mistakenly thought that Silly Zhu still liked Qin Huairu, so she gave up without confirming with Silly Zhu. He Yu Zhu didn't want this to happen. His eyes rolled and he was ready to urge Mr. San to contact Teacher Ran as soon as possible. Thinking of it means taking action. He Yu Zhu hasn't just been running between his home and factory every day these days. In fact, he even visited the capital city. Some local specialties bought while strolling in the market are stored in your personal space. I was originally planning to give it to He Rainwater when they got married, but now it seems that I can only give them half, and I need to give the other half as a gift myself. I tidied up and divided out two small bags. As he walked to the front yard, he saw the three aunties watering the flowers and asked, San aunties, have you ever seen their homeroom teacher? teacher ran. Of course I've seen it before. It looks so handsome and delicate. He Yuzhu said, sure, I believe you. Thank you, Aunt San. 
I'll go to the school to find Grandpa San. Your third uncle can't handle it, said the third aunt directly of course, he usually knew that what the three mothers were saying was true, but this time he went to school as the first step, just to block Yen Bugui's mouth. As long as he takes his own things, what will Ran Chiuye really ask in the future? Unless he really loses face, he can only recognize it and have to say good things about silly pillars. The gift was given, and it would be best if the third master introduced it. If not, when teacher Ran arrived at the courtyard, I would have an excuse to get to know her. Immediately showed trust in the three masters. He has a solution. After finishing speaking, he walked straight to the school with the prepared local specialties. After class, the third master saw he usually waiting outside the door and felt like he had miscalculated. He asked, Zhu, why did you come? You forgot, didn't you say this morning that you introduced teacher Ran to me? The third master thought he usually was in a hurry, so he said, this is really not a hurry. Zhu, it's not certain if teacher Ran will take notice of you. I have to ask her for her thoughts. Don't worry. He Yuzhu said, look at what you're saying, third master, can I not be in a hurry? I'm almost thirty years old and not married yet. If I look good, I won't be able to meet. This matter is not very easy to handle, said the third master in embarrassment he Yuzhu said, third master, I know that Mr. Ren and his parents are both high school teachers, right? They are also overseas Chinese, and they have good conditions, which I know in my heart. But I also have my advantages. I can eat alone and my whole family is not hungry. If it's not possible, I can still knock in the door. Right. Upon hearing this, the third master immediately felt that the conditions of the foolish pillar were quite good, with high salary, single status, and no parents. That is to say, if my daughter's age is not appropriate, I would just say it to Silly Zhu. He Yuzhu continued, it's not easy for her to find me like this, do you think so? As he turned around, he picked up the prepared items from behind. Sandiyi, I have prepared a gift for him. I am not good at this foreign one, but I am clear about this local specialty. Even if you hold a grain receipt, you may not be able to get it in the four or nine cities. Yen Bugue declined, after all, this is a school, which is not very good for people to see. They thought they were receiving gifts from their parents. Don't worry, third master. This is teacher Renron's. Take it first, and there's another one for you. Take this first. Upon hearing this, Yen Bugue immediately became interested. After all, if he held this gift and didn't say he needed it, selling it alone would earn him a lot of food and money, and his family would be much more prosperous. He usually lifted his things and said to the third master, Third master, I understand the situation in your family. A family of seven all point to your salary. The eldest and the other two not only add firewood, but also keep taking advantage of you. This is clear in my heart, but it does not mean that I am thanking you. This is my personal filial piety towards you. The third master pretended to remember and asked, Didn't Qin Huairu introduce her cousin to you? He Yuzhu quickly expressed a little displeasure and said, Yes, but that's a rural household registration. I still like teachers because they have high quality. The third master was somewhat happy upon hearing this and joked, Two boats on one foot. No way, third master. If you have a letter on your end, I won't be able to see you later. The third master seemed to have thought of something and said, Does the first and second masters know about this matter? He Yuzhu immediately guessed what plan Yen Bugue was up to. If the first and second masters knew that the third master had introduced him to someone, he would definitely put his heart into doing it. If he doesn't know, then he can treat it as if nothing has happened, hanging a silly pillar, without giving anything to teacher Ran. He Yuzhu didn't care about this thing, just to have the opportunity to talk to Ran Shuya, so he said, don't tell uncle one or uncle two about this. The three uncles in the courtyard are all filial. I'll come over here with filial piety. You have something to say. My family has gold and we have a reputation, right? 
I only have this little ability, so I can't afford to be filial. Okay, let me give it a try, Yen Bugue said happily as he looked at the thing in his hand. Two people with their own calculations were smiling face to face, both of whom had their own small plans, but both felt that the other was foolish enough. All right, you have to worry, third master. As you said in the morning, this marriage has really been successful. I'll send you two pounds of good fat to your home. Upon hearing that there was still a lot of fat, the third master immediately swallowed his throat. In these days, one pound of pork costs 85 cents, and there must be a meat ticket. Not to mention two pounds of fat, it's just too young of meat. Ordinary workers have to wait for ten and a half days and a month for Gesang to get a little bit of meat. Moreover, this fat is not just meat. If you boil lard, you can eat it for three to five months with a little bit of stir-fried vegetables, and the oil residue can also be left for ten and a half days and a month. This is the taste of meat for half a year. Third master, this can be considered as having a heart for it. After all, it has really become true. Apart from this meat, as a matchmaker, they cannot thank themselves after getting married, and it will be another investment. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Teacher Rant's First Hearing of Silly Pillar You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Teacher Rant's First Hearing of Silly Pillar Within a week, the third uncle has not given Hiyuju any clear news. Hiyuju is not in a hurry, after all, it was originally for Teacher Ran to come and visit the family of Bongang and speak up about this matter to gain favor. These days I have been living a very comfortable life. When going to work, if there is no leader holding a banquet, although I work every day, I will go by six or seven in the morning and come back at four or five in the afternoon. It's not my turn to cook either. If you want to help, just give me a hand. If you don't want to do it, just watch as my disciples do it. He is the only one at home, and his sister He Rainwater is not at home during this period. She either decorates the wedding house at her partner's house or lives in the factory. It can be said that during these days, one person is truly satisfied and the whole family is not hungry. In this era, being full is a kind of happiness. In this courtyard, except for one elderly man who has a better family, there are other families with only three or five children. There are also some families with a dozen or so people squeezed into a small room. Except for one or two strong laborers who have jobs, the whole family lives in a tight life. This kind of frugal life is also envious for rural girls, who try to find ways to marry city people in order to have a family meal. In this era, all factories, shops, and so on are public.private partnerships, so in their view, workers are just fed by the government. For a bachelor like Hiyuju, it's really important not to let too many people stare at him. However, it's strange to say that with such good conditions, I'm still single until I'm almost 30 years old. Suddenly, the figure of Qinhui Rizuyu and Yuruan appeared in Hiyuju's mind, and he immediately understood the true reason for being single. However, he would not hang on Qin Hui Runel. Instead, he decided to stay away from her to avoid being caught again. As he usually was about to leave for work that day, Qin Hui Ru seemed to happen to follow closely and asked, Zhu, you waited for me. Didn't you hear me talking to you? He Yuzhu. I didn't hear you. It's not good to come to me. Qin Hui Ru grabbed He Yuzhu's arm and said, I'm angry. Aren't you just because I didn't introduce my sister to you? I need to make some effort, right? He Yuzhu. No need, I have a new goal now. Qin Huiru suddenly felt a little nervous, afraid that it might be some special person. Who? You guys joke about their homeroom teacher. How about teacher Ran? Qin Huiru couldn't believe it and asked, got in touch. He usually pretended to be regretful and said, that's not true, but the third master said hello and teacher Ren Ran agreed, saying that we should agree. Isn't that a shadow? When I come, I'll just tidy up the room myself. At first, Qin Huiru didn't feel anything, but upon hearing Hiyuju's words, she immediately understood what she should do. 
If teacher Ran really comes, then I will definitely find a way to enter Hiyuzhu's house, which will lead to misunderstandings. If teacher Ran doesn't have a chance, I definitely won't have a chance now, but my cousin will have a chance. Do you also believe what Mr. San said? He usually pretended to be convinced and said, why not believe it? Of course, your cousin is very nice, but after all, she has a rural household registration. How do you compare yourself to teacher Ran? She has a scholarly background and is a lady from a wealthy family. People need to have temperament and physique. Qin Huairu angrily left a sentence. Go find your temperament. She turned around and left in a bad mood. As he usually passed by the front yard, he saw third grandpa repairing his bicycle and casually asked, third grandpa, how's that going? Has teacher Ren Ran replied. It's been a week now. Yen Bugue seemed to have just remembered this matter and hesitated before saying, oh, I'll ask again later. He usually pretended to be dissatisfied and said, I'm waiting for your good news. After that, he went straight out to work. Yen Bugue suddenly breathed a sigh of relief, thinking about how to find an excuse when Silly Zhu comes to ask next time. Although he wanted those two pounds of fat, Teacher Rant's family had no specific conditions, and he now regretted mentioning them so much. Old man, have you told Teacher Ran that this pillar has a bad temper? If you let him know, something big will happen in our family, said the third lady, seeing the appearance of the third master Yen Bugue said angrily, all right, I understand. Today, I'll talk to Teacher Ran and if she thinks it's okay, let them meet. If I had done this earlier, it would have been the right thing. Silly Zhu hasn't asked for several days, so someone must have reminded me. Don't end up not doing well. All right, I'm going to work now. As soon as I get to school, I'll talk to teacher Ran about this matter. Yen Bugue didn't repair his bike anymore, he just turned around and rode to school. Although Qin Huairu returned home angry, she had been thinking about the situation between Silly Zhu and teacher Ran. When she saw that Bang Ji was preparing to go out, she immediately came up with a plan and said, Bang Ji, when you go to work today, ask teacher Ran if your three grandfathers have told teacher Ran about your silly uncle. Bangin didn't know Qin Huiru's plan and curiously asked, what is this for? What do you think your child knows? Just look at her reaction and attitude, Qin Huiru said, staring at Bang Jen. Bang Ji casually agreed and prepared to go to school. I haven't finished speaking yet, why are you in a hurry? How many classes will we have this afternoon? Two classes. Qin Huiru pondered and said, two festivals, so you can go to the factory to see your mother after school in the afternoon. Yen Bugue never expected that his little plan would be seen through by Qin Huiru, and that he would be prepared to give him a fatal blow and take away his matchmaker job, which would embarrass him even more. Fortunately, he is also preparing to mention this matter to teacher Ran now, so it can be considered as a mistake. Teacher Ran, you're here for work. Teacher Yen, why did you come to this office? Who are you looking for? So what, I'm just here to find you. Looking for me. Ran Xiuya looked at Yen Bugue and didn't understand why he was looking for him. Do you want to switch shifts with yourself? But he teaches mathematics, and he teaches Chinese himself. Yen Bugue was actually a bit embarrassed, after all, this was his first time matchmaking, and he could only say, Teacher Ran, this is such a thing. You probably don't have a partner yet, right? Ran Chiuya understood the purpose of Yen Bugue's visit. Although she was a bit shy, she didn't dare to nod and whispered, Yes. Yen Bugue finally breathed a sigh of relief, that's all. Teacher Ran, let me be frank. There is a chef named Hiyuzhu in our yard who is a top dot notch chef at a steel rolling mill. He is still single and would like to meet you. If you are willing, you can meet him first. How about that? Who is Hiyuzhu? Ran Chiuya asked curiously. Yen Bugue directly talked about Hiyuzhu's situation before saying, Teacher Ran, what do you think? If it's appropriate, I'll tell Zhu and you can meet then. This age is a bit old, isn't there any illness? 
He's not sick, his body is quite strong. One of them didn't get married because he had a younger sister, and the other was raised like a daughter. Now that his sister is also getting married, that's why he wants to find a wife. Teacher Yen, let's meet this weekend. Let's not talk about anything else. What do you think? Okay, no problem. You happen to be the homeroom teacher of our yard, so you can treat it as a home visit and see if he use you is as good as I said. How about that? Okay, but don't tell him yet. If it's not suitable, it'll be awkward. Okay, okay, definitely no problem. Yen Bugue finally relaxed and felt like he had dismantled the time bomb, making walking much easier. He thought of the big fat promised by He Yuzhu, and his saliva secreted more. Ran Shouya looked out the window somewhat confused. In fact, she had not yet figured out whether she was really dating He Yuzhu. However, due to the face of her colleagues, she planned to meet He Yuzhu first. If she felt it was suitable, they continued to get along, and if it was not suitable, she would no longer contact them. Teacher Ran Ran Shouya turned around and saw Bangang knocking on the door. Curiously, she asked, Bangang, what's up with you? So, Teacher Ran, did the third master in our hospital mention the matter of silly pillar to you? Sandiyi. Silly pillar. Ran Shouya asked inexplicably. The third master is Teacher Yen, and it's about He Yuzhu and you. He's the cook in our courtyard, and his name is Silly Zhu. Ran Shouya listened to Bangdan's words and suddenly said with some displeasure, Bang Jen, how can you call someone that way? He's from your uncle's generation, so you should call him Uncle He or Uncle Juzi. Got it, Teacher Ran. By the way, why is uncle he called Silly Pillar? Dot? I'm not sure, but both our yard and their factory call him Stupid Pillar. Dot. All right, I understand now. Teacher Yen has told me about this matter. You don't need to worry, go back to class. Goodbye, Teacher Ran. Ran Shouya looked at the stick meme walking out and couldn't help but wonder if Yen Bugue was kind. Hearted. After all, the name Silly Zhu sounds a bit silly to everyone. If it's really silly, how could Teacher Yen introduce herself? Silly Zhu, what kind of person are you? Ran Shouya was a bit curious about He Yuzhu, after all, when it comes to the name Silly Zhu, the word spoken by the third master actually made her feel that these two people were not the same person. Upon hearing the news of her son's return, Qin Huairu's eyes immediately dimmed. She didn't expect Yen Bugue to really tell Teacher Ran that this was not his style of doing things. Suddenly, she thought to herself that Silly Zhu didn't know the situation yet. What would happen if she said that Teacher Ran didn't even know about this matter? He Yuzhu will definitely not be able to confirm the situation with Teacher Ran. Instead, he will be angry that the third master deceived him, so he has to have a conflict with the third master. The third master will not continue to introduce the marriage, so Jingru will have a chance. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Qin Huiru's Acting Skills You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Qin Huiru's Acting Skills Hey, Lu Lan, where's the cleaning? Lu Lan saw Qin Huiru come in and understood that she was looking for He Yuzhu. She said directly, look for He Yuzhu, he's in the kitchen. You can go in and find him. Qin Huiru looked down on Lu Lan a bit. She was a widow and had a good relationship with people. However, Lu Lan, in order to enter the cafeteria, disregarded her husband's presence and directly became the affection of deputy factory director Li. Lu Lan actually looks down on Qin Huiru, after all, everyone is as black as a crow, not to mention anyone. She had an affair with deputy factory director Li, not because her man was injured and unable to work, in order to support her family. But Qin Huiru is flirting and flirting with many people in the factory, even hanging single He Yuzhu, thinking that no one knows. Last time, the incident between the warehouse and Su Damao, although it was said to be a tickle, everyone understands what they really want. It's just that no one has exposed it, and they're still faced to cling to Silly Zhu. It's really foolish to be a Silly Zhu. 
He's cooking and I can't go. Can you help me call him? Qin Huiru stood in front of Lu Lan, looking down at her as she bent down and mopped the floor, with a feeling of superiority. Lu Lan didn't expect Qin Huiru to say this. She glanced at her and finally sighed, saying, Okay, you can sit and wait for a while. I'll go get you. Thank you. Don't be polite. When he Yuzhu heard Lu Lan's words and saw Qin Huiru outside, he didn't understand why she came again. I said I sold her a few pounds of stick noodles to save some food, which is enough for their family to live for a period of time. I said Qin Huiru, are you bothering me? Qin Huiru didn't expect that he Yuzhu would say these words to her on the first sight. She immediately felt that her previous plan was correct. If he Yuzhu really had to be with Teacher Ran, her family wouldn't have relied on Silly Zhu to help. But leaving the silly pillar, my family's living standards still have to decline. Yi Zhonghai is also a master of not seeing rabbits and not scattering eagles. If she is not pregnant, she may only have a few intimate encounters every month to get some food, but what is enough to do? I can't listen, right? I don't want to say it yet. Qin Huiru pretended to be ready to leave, as if there was really some big news. He Yuzhu's curiosity arose and he asked, No, what's the situation? Since everyone has arrived, let's talk about it. Qin Huiru felt secretly pleased in her heart, but she pretended to be calm and said, The human stick meme asked Teacher Ran, and Teacher Ran said, What kind of person is this? Do you understand? Upon hearing this, he Yuzhu initially thought that it was really the third master who didn't take money to do anything but he realized that he still had two pounds of fat hanging around, so it shouldn't be. However, for the sake of confirmation, we can only meet Qin Huiru's requirements first and confront the third master when the time comes. Of course, he wouldn't be like in TV dramas, directly targeting the three masters without asking questions. After all, a one-dot-sided statement is not acceptable, and one must confront them face dot to dot face. Got it, since you're here, why don't you bring some back? Qin Huiru didn't want to take it. After all, he set out to catch big fish in the long run. But thinking of the taste of white flower mantu, he smiled and looked at Hiyuzhu. Well, if you can give me five white flower mantu, you can really help me and remove my mother. In law's misunderstanding of me. When Hiyuzhu heard this, he wished he could slap him directly, misunderstand. Bullshit misunderstanding, I really thought I didn't know anything. I saw them applauding and misunderstood. Looking at the woman in front of me, who appeared as pure and chaste as a martyr, I felt extremely disgusted. I sat down and engaged in promiscuous behavior, even asking other men to pay for it and wash myself clean. However, I am too lazy to expose her. Since seeing that scene, I will definitely not choose Qin Huiru. Even if she is good and beautiful, she cannot be taken alone without following the principles of femininity. Understood, understood. Did the news brought back according to the meme of the stick be mocked by the third master inside and outside? Qin Huiru saw that he Yuzhu had not taken any practical action and was unwilling to answer the question directly. Goos will left and right, he said. Don't look at these five mantu, they can really break my mother. In law's heart. He Yuzhu looked at Qin Huiru in front of him and knew that if he didn't give her mantu, he couldn't let go, so he had to say. Don't always care about these five mantu. Call me the stick stick. If he comes, add five more mantu. He Yuzhu is nothing else, just like confirming whether it is true that the third grandpa did not bring a message, or if Qin Huiru intervened. If the third grandpa did not act, then he would treat it as a local specialty and feed the dog. Anyway, I will always be able to see teacher Ran in the future. When I talk about the matter of the third master not doing anything with money, I can also earn sympathy from Ran Shuya. As for whether it was Qin Huiru who caused trouble, then this matter has been discussed. If I were to confront the third master and mention the stick meme like this, would Qin Huiru still be able to maintain her disguise as a good person? Will it be difficult to stay in the courtyard? 
Qin Huairu heard that there were five more Mantu, thought for a moment, and said, these five Mantu are different from those five Mantu in nature. She secretly felt fortunate in her heart. Fortunately, she had already instructed the good meme to tell him what to say. Anyway, teacher Ran could not testify, and who could expose a child's lies, let alone say that childlike words are insincere. Most people would believe that what was said from a child's mouth is true. He Yuzhu didn't realize what Qin Huairu meant and curiously asked, Why can't I understand? Why don't you be a silly pillar? He Yuzhu waved his hand and said, Then I won't give it. Qin Huairu said, If you don't give it to me, why don't you give it to me? Is that what you said? He Yuzhu, that's what I said. Teacher Ran said, Who is the third master? He Yuzhu looked at Qin Huairu's complacent expression and knew that she didn't scatter eagles without seeing rabbits. He could only say, wait a minute, I'll give you the mantu. Qin Huairu was very proud and knew that his goal had been achieved. Not only did he get ten big mantu, but he also removed teacher Ran and He Yuzhu. Come back, wait for me to finish speaking. Teacher Ran asked, who are these three masters? As the joke goes, isn't the third master our grades teacher Yen? Uncle He Yuzhu wants to ask teacher Yen to meet you. Teacher Ran asked again, what does Uncle He Yuzhu do? The joke is cook, let's move on, you're not suitable to listen to it anymore. He Yuzhu looked at Qin Huairu and said these words. Although he didn't believe them, there was no way to verify them now. He could only pretend to believe her words and said, I didn't say anything. Seeing that Qin Huairu didn't say anything, he had to resign himself to taking Mantu. Of course, the Mantu was not taken for nothing, but bought with food stamps. Qin Huairu went home with Mantu. Jia Zhang saw it and stared at the cloth bag that bumped into Mantu. Qin Huairu turned to see Jia Zhang staring at himself and said, You don't think this Mantu is clean again? I didn't say anything. I have to hide some Mantu. I'm hungry for fine grains. Steam some steamed buns for dinner. Jia Zhang watched as he picked up five big white flower mantu and left several mantu on the table. He kept thinking about whether Qin Huairu had done something wrong. It's not that she doesn't believe in Qin Huairu. In this age, white flower mantu is much more expensive than coarse grain wawatu. One white flower mantu can be exchanged for two wawatu. She can't believe that the mantu is so easy to come. Someone must have sent it. She will definitely ask how it came later. On this day, he Rainwater went home to eat, and he usually prepared the food early and waited. He Rainwater saw the pork stewed noodles on the table and exclaimed excitedly, Brother, you got rich today and even bled. You got it, don't mention it. Just eat your food well. By the way, you told me about your partner's situation. How's it going? Well, Yu Hai Tang has a boyfriend now and I can't introduce him to you. But my classmate Zhang Xuqin is also good. Don't forget, don't mention your classmate. Good guy, that's just a tiger girl. Who can handle those two big tiger teeth? In the middle of the night, I had a dream and a mother tiger was lying next to me. Haha, <laughs> then it's up to you whether it's high or low. When it's time, it's all me who's delaying you. Otherwise, now you can even make soy sauce, my nephew. What does it have to do with you? Your brother and I are just hot cakes. There are too many people I care about, so I have to make good choices. Sigh, I thought Ran Shoya had a play, but I didn't expect that even the third master, who was fully educated in poetry and books, would deceive people. As he was speaking, he heard the third master knocking on the door and saying, What are you talking about? How did your third master deceive people? Sandiyi, you're here. Hurry up, have you eaten? Let's have some together. He usually pulled he rainwater and gestured for her not to speak. The third master looked at the pork stewed noodles on the table, swallowed his saliva subconsciously, and said, What's that? I've had dinner before, I just came to tell you. Teacher Ran promised to meet you, 
but I can't say if it will be successful. Upon hearing the words of the third master, he Rainwater immediately looked at him with confusion. How could this be different from what Bang Gung and Qin Huiru said? However, he usually understood in his heart that the third master must not give up halfway for the sake of those two pounds of fat. Therefore, he had reservations about Qin Huiru's words before, and now he happened to ask what the situation was. Third master, what did Teacher Ran say? This, this. The third master looked at the dishes on the table and didn't want to speak for a moment. Okay, third master, sit down while I get some wine. Let's drink and chat. Do you think so? This is like I crave some wine from you, said the third master, but he still sat on the stool, waiting to drink. Pillar, your third uncle has put a lot of effort into it. You also know that teacher Ran is young, beautiful, and cultured. When they hear that you are almost thirty years old and not married yet, he is a cook and a bit unhappy. Yen Bugue took a sip of his wine and continued, but your grandfather didn't give it for free. Isn't she still a great homeroom teacher? So I suggested to her to do a home visit and see you. Teacher Ran agreed to come to the courtyard tomorrow. You should tidy up well and don't leave my people behind, okay? He usually didn't expect that the third master had actually told Teacher Ran this time, so now he has to prepare to meet Teacher Ran. Okay, thank you, third master. Don't worry, I will definitely perform well. This book has been signed, so everyone can watch it with confidence. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Lies You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Lies Yen Bugue seemed to have just remembered something and asked, What's wrong? I didn't hear it truthfully outside the door just now. The rain seems to have some objections to me, right? He rainwater suddenly felt embarrassed and wanted to find a crack in the ground, so he had to say, Third Master, this is mine. I didn't listen to the stick meme, you didn't even mention this matter to teacher Ran. My fault, third master, you don't remember being a petty person. No, who said I didn't mention it? If I didn't mention it, could teacher Ran agree to do a home visit with Bongang and come to see Zhu? Isn't this bad for my reputation? No, I have to tell him. Upon hearing this, Yen Bugue understood why he Rainwater had just scolded him. Although I did hang he Yuzhu before, I also told teacher Ran about this matter. How could it be that I didn't mention it? He Yuzhu also understood that it was all the lies told by Qin Huiru before, but he was too lazy to argue with her. He pulled Yen Bugue, who was preparing to go find Qin Huiru to settle the accounts, and said, My third master, let's forget about this matter. Facts speak louder than words. When teacher Ran comes, it will be clear. Now when you go to find them, do they believe you or do they believe in stick memes? After hearing this, Yen Bugue was taken aback for a moment and sighed, saying, Ah, indeed, but teacher Ran came over this weekend and I will confront her face dot to dot face. After a few people had a meal, Yen Bugue looked at the direction of the Jia family with disdain and walked away with two young of meat gifted by He Yuzhu. He Rainwater watched as the third master walked away before speaking up, brother, who is really saying that? Bang Ji and Qin Jie wouldn't deceive you like this, would they? What benefits can they have? He Yuzhu took a look at the Jia family and said, what else can I do for? For a few stutters, I lost my ten big white flower mantu. Ah, you really gave them so much. No way, I have to ask them to get it back. Why did you lie and get so much? Forget it, their family can't afford it, so let's just pay the tuition fee. In the future, they really believe that 30% of what they say will be enough. If you mention anything to us again, think about the tuition fee your brother paid today. Okay, brother, I'll listen to you. But on teacher Rant's side, what exactly are you planning? What are you going to do? Troops for the enemy, Earth for floods. Your brother is also good, and his treatment is also good. He will definitely win. That's good, brother. I'll go rest first. Go ahead. 
After he Yuzhu closed the door, he lay in bed facing Qin Huiru's plan. I didn't realize before that Qin Huiru really dared to lie. In the original plot, even if the three masters didn't mention it, now they dare to deceive themselves directly. Of course, this matter won't just be settled like this. He Rainwater went to find Qin Huiru, and the big deal was that the child didn't understand. What else could he get? But their white flower mantu is not so delicious, and sooner or later they will pay the price. When Sandi Yi returned home, he saw several children and his eldest daughter dot in dot law waiting for him. Seeing the two young of meat he was holding in his hand, he immediately stared with a green light in his eyes. What are you all looking at? This is a pillar given to me, not part of our family's plan. Of course, everyone has a share. Let's eat today, and tomorrow night we'll have pork stewed with vermicelli and have a good meal. His father, you're not good enough. Save these two young of meat and you can eat them for several days. Three aunties saw such a big piece of meat and didn't want to make it in a day, so they divided it into several days to eat. Hi, it's okay. If everything goes smoothly, we can have some meat and fish every day in our house from now on. After hearing this, the three aunties immediately came to their senses and asked, Have you made any progress in matchmaking for the pillar? I have a plan, but I almost had a problem. This bear kid, Bang Ji, actually said that I didn't mention it to teacher Ran, which almost caused Chu to misunderstand. Then we flew away with two pounds of fat. What, there's such a thing happening? No, we have to go find them. Isn't this bad for our reputation? Don't worry, after teacher Ran meets Chu, we will confront each other face dot to dot face. I don't believe that teacher Ran is still cheating. When Yuli saw that she couldn't eat meat today, she remembered something and said, Dad, I want to borrow your bike. What's the use of it? The boss said, it's not that Aunt Yuli came from Shangxi by train. Their family only has a bicycle, and Yuli wants to use our bicycle. Okay, this matter is important. Yen Jifang said, Alas, Dad, tomorrow my mom will let me go to Zuoji Aswang to exchange for sweet potatoes. Mom. Yes, didn't teacher Ran give you 10 pounds of national grain coupons? I thought it wouldn't be worth it to exchange it for Beijing grain coupons because there is oil in the national grain coupons. But the oil can't be taken out. I thought about it and suggested that the second person go to Zuoji Aswang to exchange for sweet potatoes. One pound of national grain coupons can be exchanged for four pounds of sweet potatoes without changing money. After hearing this, Yen Bugue fell silent for a moment and said, Yes, this matter is quite important. The third person anxiously said, I still want to use a bicycle. You're not serious, what kind of bike are you using? The three aunties almost spat out their food. Why haven't I taken it seriously? Our physical education teacher even told me to go to the Daitan Sports Stadium with him tomorrow and learn the second set of radio gymnastics. The third master sat watching his family eat, nodded, and said, Hmm, this is a serious matter. After looking at the only girl who didn't speak, he asked, Hey girl, don't you want to use a bicycle? The fourth girl looked at the others and said uninteresting, I won't say it anymore. It's useless to say it. Anyway, it's not my turn. Yen Bugue looked at the expectant children and said, Oh, this thing, you have to look at it that way. Your sister dot in dot laws matter involves our relationship with our in-laws, isn't it, boss? I knew you were reasonable. The matter of this second son is also very important. He is diligent and frugal in managing the family. This involves the issue of our family's food. People are iron, rice is steel, and this is not a small matter. You see, as a big family, we are not poor in food and flowers, and we cannot calculate that we will suffer from poverty. Right. Yen Bugue looked at the happy second and continued, the matter of the third is even more important. He is a class cadre in the class, and the physical education teacher wants to take him with him, which shows that he values him very much. 
Maybe he is preparing to occupy a very important position in the class, right? Right, right. But, I said, but can't we solve these problems when we encounter them? Yu Li, you accompany your aunt to walk around Wong Fujing Street and watch the excitement. Riding a bicycle, it just whizzes past. Then you walk with her a few steps to the big fence, and it's even more lively to walk around there, isn't it? Yuli didn't expect her future father in law to say this, but she couldn't refute it. She had originally wanted to put on a facade, so it seems that this is the only way. What about the second one? You can't exchange sweet potatoes tomorrow, can't you just go the day after tomorrow? Besides, we're not far from that left family village. After that, can you carry him back? Third, if you walk there and don't even take that bus, then the physical education teacher will like you more, right? Yen Jicheng asked inexplicably, no, who exactly uses a bicycle? I'm using it. I don't have any classes tomorrow, so I'm planning to go fishing outside the city by smashing ice holes. A few children were all dissatisfied and said, no, then are you doing nothing? How can I be idle? I don't spend money fishing. If I catch the fish, I can sell it to the cafeteria of Silly Zhu's factory. Can't I exchange money to come back to our house to live? Silly Zhu is asking me to marry teacher Ran, so I'm sure he can agree now. It's still your father's business that matters. Yen Bugue smiled proudly and said, Ah, if you hadn't rushed through these things now, it would have been better. If teacher Ran had gotten married to Silly Zhu, it would have been much more convenient for us to borrow her bicycle soon. That's right, you see, our family hasn't seen any meat in two weeks, so your dad brought the meat back. If they get married in the future, we will definitely benefit from it. Yen Bugue sighed and said, Ah, it's a pity you said. If the girl were a little older, it would be great. I've been thinking about it for a few days, and Silly Pillar is quite good. With a monthly salary of 37.5 yuan, one person can eat enough and the whole family is not hungry. In the cafeteria, one can occasionally bring some leftover food from the leader's meals without being short of mouth. Now it's better, teacher Ran is cheap. Upon hearing this, Yu Li's eyes lit up and she said, Dad, when it comes to this, my cousin Yu Hai Tang, you should know that she's almost getting married. Yen Bugue asked in confusion, I know. So what's going on? Isn't she having a partner now? What's the point? We can still divide the conversation partners and get divorced after getting married. How about introducing her to Silly Zhu? If Silly Zhu becomes a relative of our family, then he will definitely be able to share some of the boxed meals he brings back with us, right? Yen Bugue hesitated for a moment and said, You can't be in a hurry about this matter. You need to wait and see. First, you need to talk to your sister and see what her opinion is. Also, Teacher Ran has already agreed that in case Silly Zhu looks at her, you can't dodge your sister. That's true. Okay, I'll ask her in a few days. If she's willing, Teacher Ran won't be able to deal with Silly Zhu either. You can mention this to Silly Zhu then. Okay, eat quickly and rest early. He Yuzhu didn't know that Yu Hai Tang, who was originally hopeless, had the opportunity to contact him now. The next day, Xiaonyan. He Yuzhu woke up early and started tidying up the house. He Rainwater also got up early to help, but she was a bit worried. After all, although her brother had a good salary, he was not young, and she didn't know if teacher Ran was interested. Brother, don't you drag this place for a while. Will it be bad for teacher Ran to see it? Brother, is this table suitable to be placed here? How about we move it? Brother, have you washed these old clothes? If you can't take them to my room, I'll wash them for you another day, right? No, girl, why do you look even more nervous than me? What's going on here? Isn't it just a blind date? Don't worry, your brother is standing here, afraid that people won't look up to him. End of this chapter